So if you live where the weather is cold, and you got a Raven 1 with carburetors, pretty hard to start. You definitely got to have a primer on these things. If it's fuel injected, it's easy to start in the winter, hard to start in the summer. Carburetors are hard to start in the winter and easy to start in the summer. RPM's right at 60%, waiting on the clutch light to go out. Clutch light goes out, we'll come up to 70% for the warm up. So we're going to go out and okay, clutch lights out. We'll come up to 70% for the warm-up. Let our engine temps come on up. So today we're going to go out and do some pull-down auto rotations. Um, I learned everything I know about auto rotations by flying gyroplanes. Auto rotation in a gyroplane is called a landing. So you're always in auto rotation in a gyro. So Once I lower the collective on this uh, helicopter, guess what? It acts just like a gyroplane with a couple, uh, couple differences that we'll talk about later. Lower that collective, you're an unpowered rotor crab. And we'll take a listen to the winds. condition overcast 2200 temperature 0, 05 celsius dew point 0, 01 celsius altimeter 2989er remarks density altitude minus 700 cape girardeau municipal airport automated weather observation 1506 zulu wind 310 at 14 Visibility one zero. Sky condition overcast two. So three one zero one four. <clears throat> Guess we'll use runway two eight. In fact, what we'll probably end up doing is using the taxiway adjacent to runway two eight. We're not even going to use the runway. Okay. Okay. Wait for my gauges to get up into the green. Still not quite there. So learning to do full down auto rotations is quite a confidence builder. A lot of students have never done one, especially if they, uh, if you don't have your CFI, it's not required to get your commercial that you actually be proficient at doing full downs. It is for your CFI. Days gone by, you actually did full down auto rotations on your check ride to get your uh, CFI. But uh, now the FAA has kind of changed the process. I guess they didn't want to shoulder the uh, liability, so they have you do it with your instructor. Hopefully you got an instructor that's proficient at it and you don't tear up an aircraft. <clears throat> but now they have, a do it, have you do it with your instructor when you're uh, going to be getting your CFI. So it's a real confidence builder. Most people, uh, a lot of helicopter pilots have never really done them all the way to the ground if they've been trained uh, just through to your commercial. And you ought to at least have rode through a few of them and done a few uh, just for, uh, like I say, just for proficiency. So don't recommend you go out by yourself doing a bunch of full down auto rotation practice. But it's something that you ought to get together with an instructor that's well versed in full downs and, um, and get a few under your belt. Okay, so looking at my gauges, I got green, green, green. I'm going to come on up. We do our mag checks at 90. Robinson has, them, has you do them at 75, basically for noise abatement, and uh, here we don't care about noise abatement. I do my mag checks at 90 if I got a drop. I got a much more prominent drop at 90 than I do at 75. And mag one bag is a little rough there. All right, going to come up to check my horn and my light. And there it is. Going to roll the 
throttle down, split the needles. There we go. When you roll the throttle down to split the needles, you don't need to just chop it, especially on a super cold engine or an engine that's relatively cold. Just roll it down nice and gently and All right, pre-takeoff checklist. Clear the area. I'm clear left. I'm clear right, except for a hangar, a truck, a golf cart, and a flag, and I don't know what else is over there. But... All right, doors and seatbelts are secure. Got the warning lights are all out, except for the governor. Gauges are now in the green. We got plenty of fuel for what we're going to do today. Radios are tuned. I'm on the tower frequency. I got my knock on the GPS. Coming off with my, fr or my frictions, off of my cyclic friction, off with the collective friction. Roll it up to 90%. Turn the governor on. The governor will take it. Right on up. See if we can actually fly this thing. Yeah, let's sneak it over here. And Cape Terry, good morning. Uh, copter uh, 211 Tangle Bravo down on the Cape Copter ramp. 211 Tangle Bravo Cape, good morning. What can I do for you? Uh, Tim, I'd like to go out, uh, proceed uh, initially to the west, 180 back to the east. I'd like to do a series of full down auto rotations to Alpha Taxiway. Uh, aircraft actually slides much better on Alpha Taxiway than it does on the uh, runway. One Tango Bravo, the wind 300 at 15, altimeter 29er, 89er. Use caution, departing a non movement area. Proceed as requested. Yeah, One Tango Bravo is on the go. Departed to the west, we're 180 and back to the east. Wind's out of the west this morning, so we'll do some... Uh, uh, taxiway Alpha, clear for the option. Yeah, clear for the option for uh, Taxiway Alpha, for one tackle problem. Now we're stretching it on out to the east here a little bit. And we'll come around and line up with Alpha Taxiway. And we've got car beat is full on this morning. Definitely got some... A little bit of moisture in the air, and it's uh, cool enough. You definitely want to don't forget that curb heat. All right, so all my temps are looking good. They're well into the green there. So we're going to come around and line up with Alpha Taxiway. Alpha Taxiway parallels runway 28. It's pretty skinny. It's only, uh, well, I don't know, 50 or 60 feet wide, 70 feet wide, something like that. So we've got a smaller target hitting for it, but not a problem. You can see from here, the initial part of Alpha Taxiway is all pavement. Aircraft slides much easier on the pavement than it does on the cement. It almost acts like Velcro. Wants to really grab a hold, so we're not going to we'll use the black part of the runway here, the paved part or bay part of the uh, taxiway, rather. So remember, airspeed is your friend. So you don't want to be going too slow. We're going to enter the auto at about 70. So I think we can get there from here. So we're going to come down, roll it off, up just a little bit with the collective. Try to limit that RPM. Yeah, we'll come down a little bit. Pretty light today, so. All right, so there's our first one. That was not real pretty, but oh well. So when you're sliding, you still have control of the aircraft. So if I push left pedal, I go left, you know, I yaw left, right pedal, I yaw right. And I can slide the stick back and forth to control the side slide to the left or to the right. So that's not a problem. But we're pretty late today. In fact, do this one without the horn yelling at me. One tangle Bravo is on the go. Uh, can we do a left-hand pattern for Alpha Taxi with? You can. Thank you, sir.
So again, I learned everything I know about auto rotations, <laughs> mostly from flying gyro plants. And one of the overlying things with auto rotations is don't get slow, okay? Airspeed is your friend. You're turning that airspeed, that kinetic energy, into the ability to stop both your... Clear for the option. And clear for the option, uh, taxiway alpha for one tank of Bravo. So you're turning that kinetic energy into the ability to stop both your forward motion and your descent. The less airspeed you have, the less kinetic energy. Remember, it's mass times velocity squared for kinetic energy. And if we're going 50 knots, we only have 2,500 units of energy. If we're going 70 knots, we have 4,900 units. So twice as much energy at 70 than we have at 50. All right, we'll come around and get lined up again here. Kind of a dreary day here in Cape Toronto, kind of foggy, a little bit cold. Five degrees Celsius outside, so you guys know how to convert that, right? Double it, subtract 10%, that's 9 plus 32, 41 degrees outside. All right, so we're plenty high here. We've got, uh, got our spot in sight. Get a little bit closer here. See if we can definitely make the runway here. All right, coming down. Rolling off. Barely up on the collective. I got the collective almost all the way down. It's still screaming at me. All right, so B looks good. We're a good 70 on the descent here. All right, got to flare just a little bit here. We're floating, 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 floating. Now I got to get my skids down to level, up on the collective. We're on the ground. Make the horrible scratchy sound as we... All right, so now if I bring my stick to the right, see the aircraft comes back to the right. Again, I have control of the aircraft left to right by using, or I'm sorry, with yaw control. With the rudders, and I use the stick a little bit left or right if my slide starts to head out to the left or to the right. So we'll roll her back up and give it another whirl. So light today, I got to have the, essentially the collective all the way down. I don't have much fuel in it. Evidently, I must be losing weight. <laughs> I wish. And we're on the go. And one Tango Bravo is coming around on the downwind for uh, Alpha Taxiway. Tango Bravo, Taxiway Alpha, clear for the option. Clear for the option for uh, one Tango Bravo. All right, so you notice I keep try to keep my speed up. You know, that's, again, speed is pretty much your friend. Much rather do an auto rotation at 70 than 50. I got a lot more kinetic energy. That gives me a lot more options with it, so. Again, we're so light today, I'm the only one in here. So, pretty much got the collective all the way down. During the auto, just a teensy bit, about a sixteenth of an inch up off the off the stops, about it. And you can see, if you look at see the windsock out there, we've got about a 30 degree crosswind from the right there. So, all right, going to enter my auto. So down, roll it off, up a little teeny bit. Looking to keep our speed pretty much right at 70. We're looking good. We'll sneak over this way a little bit. Eh, come down a little more with it. Get down here. I'm going to flare early. Now we're gliding, floating, 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 floating. Now I'm getting my skids down up on the collective. That was kind of ugly. <laughs> All right, so I'm using my feet. Again, I'm going to bring the stick to the right because the wind's going to tend to blow me off the left side of the uh, taxiway we just kind of wait for it to quit sliding there we go all the way down roll it back up yeah we're on the go So 
Because technically to do the full down auto rotation is much easier if you keep a little bit of forward motion and slide across a hard surface like that. If you're having to plant this thing in the mud, that's a completely different uh, profile here. Yeah, one tangle Bravo is on the downwind for two eight or for uh, Alpha Taxiway. One tangle Bravo Taxiway Alpha clear for the option. And clear for Alpha Taxiway. One tangle Bravo. At the end of this thing, you'd actually flare. You have to flare significantly higher, lead off more of your forward airspeed. And if you have, like, say, one of the, if we had to go down one of these muddy fields, it's muddy everywhere around this morning. If we had to go down to one of these muddy fields, at the end of this, we're going to actually flare. Let it float a bit and then reflare to a higher nose attitude to bleed off more of my airspeed. And we're going to try to, we would try to plant it basically with essentially the smallest amount of forward airspeed we could. So that the aircraft, could you, pretty sure the aircraft's going to, the skid's going to want to dig into that soft mud and you don't want to kind of put the thing over on its nose. So, all right, coming around. We've got our uh, Alpha Taxi waiting down there. And uh, looks like we could probably make it, eh, we can make it about now. I'm going to come down with the collective, rolling it off. Going to come up just a teeny bit, and we'll see if the horn yells at me this time. Hey, looking good. And we'll get over here towards the middle of the taxiway. He's looking good. Get down about here. We're going to start a little wimpy flare. Flare into it. We're floating, 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 floating. Starts to settle up on the collective, down with the nose, and we we're on the front row, or on the taxiway rather. Now I'm using my feet again, so I got my, you know, got a little right stick into it, so we're not sliding off over into the grass there from the wind. And I'm using my pedals here to control y'all. Let me just wait for the thing to quit slide. There we go. We'll roll it up, try it again. Most of the full down auto rotations, what, what kind of spooks most of the guys is it's kind of fear of the unknown. If you've never done one, if you've never ridden through one, I guess you'd have some sort of uh, uh, thoughts of it being a whole hell of a lot more exciting than what it actually is. Really, if you do, you know, a lot of times if you do these things into a pretty brisk one. One tank of Bravo, taxiway alpha, clear for the option. And clear for the option, taxiway alpha for one tank of Bravo. Doing it to a pretty, pretty brisk wind, you know, 20 knots or whatever. When you, when you set the aircraft down, man, you're only going about two or three knots. It almost looks like a normal landing if you, you know, to the outside observer. If they didn't know what they were looking at, it looked pretty much just like a normal landing. All right, we're coming around. Today we got 10 knots of wind, so that helps a little bit. We did still slide quite a bit across the ground, or across the, uh, down the taxiway rather. But again, technically it's much easier to leave where you're gonna have just a little bit of a slide across the, uh, if you're on a hard surface than it is to try to plant it with, with essentially zero ground speed. That, that gets pretty tough. Your timing has to be much better on the, after the flare, try to get your skids back down below you. All right, we're coming down. Rolling the throttle off, coming up just a little bit with the collective. Yeah, you're going to lower my nose. The horn probably will yell at me here, but that's okay. I'm just getting my speed up a little bit in the descent. There we go. We're about 70-ish. That's looking pretty good. All right, getting down to about here. We're going to do a little wimpy flare and flare into it. We're floating, 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 floating. Now it's starting to settle down with the skids, up with the collective just a little bit. There's that horrible grinding sound. So now a little bit of right pedal to bring that nose back. A little bit of right stick to kind of keep it near the center of the uh, taxiway. And we're just waiting for it to quit slide. And that's it. We'll try another one.
Man, one Tango Bravo is on the downwind for uh, Alpha Taxiway. Tango Bravo, Taxiway, Alpha Clippity, Alpha. Here's the Austin Alpha Taxiway, one Tango Bravo. In fact, we look like we make our spot, so we're gonna come on down with the collected, roll the throttle off up just a teensy bit with the, the collected, just a limit our rotor RPM. Look like we're right at 100%. That looks good. Airspeed looks good. Right at 70. RPMs look good. Come down here. We're gonna start a wimpy little flare to begin with. We're floating, 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 floating. Starts to settle right about there. Down level with the skids up on the collected, and we're on the ground. Uh, you know, we touched down, and we slid about, oh, probably 50 or 60 feet. Not so bad. Bubs lose the engine right now, lower the collective, roll back, turn back towards the uh, end of the wind, and, uh, and just have to put up with the fact that I'll probably end up in the field there. But you know, when you're flying aircraft, you know, you don't need to be paranoid, but the whole time you're in there, you ought to be thinking about where you might go if the engine quits. And we're on the downwind for uh, Alpha Taxiway. One Tango Bravo Taxiway, Alpha Clippity Option. If the option, Alpha Taxiway, one Tango Bravo. But you ought to be thinking about it anyway. Have some sort of idea where you're going to go because when the thing quits, you got just about a second to make a decision. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, just a few seconds to actually pick out your spot. You got to get that collective down. When this thing quits, get the collective down. No matter what you do, where you go, if you don't get the collective down and you get a blade stall, you're going to die. So you got to get the collective down. First and foremost, and you quits, get the collective down. If you've already sort of had an idea where you're going to go, well, if you did have to do an auto rotation, then you you know the decision becomes much easier. So as you fly around, you just kind of look around and see where you might want to go. So we're going to enter the auto, we're coming down with the collective, off with the throttle, up just a teeny bit with the collective. RPMs look good, airspeed looks good. Go for our little taxiway here. Down about here, we're going to start a wimpy little flare. We are floating, 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 floating. Starting to settle down with the uh, down with the skids, rather. Up with the collective a little bit. And a little bit of side stick, just to keep it right here over the yellow line. Wait for it to quit sliding. There we go. Down with the collect or down with the collective, rolling back up. And Tim, I'd like to do a uh, uh, departure uh, auto rotation here, so I'll be remaining over Alpha, and I'll be uh, actually landing on the departure end of Alpha. That's proof. One thing, Robert. One thing. So as I get older, I get more paranoid. So when I do my takeoffs, you know, everybody wants to climb out, start climbing out of 45 or 50 or whatever. Man, I, I take off, I try to keep my speed on up before I get too damn far off the planet here. So we're down here, we're just a couple feet. I'm letting my speed come on up. We're at 60. In fact, I'll wait. I'm not even going to climb up. I'll just show you. You can do a, uh, say we're getting down here, we're departing. As long as you have 70 knots, if this thing quits on, and I'm on this, uh, departure, then all I'm going to do is keep the aircraft level. Because I know if I keep my aircraft relatively level, I got 70. So here we are, we're, I don't know, 75 feet in the air. So we're going to enter the auto, down, roll. I'm not even looking at anything. I'm coming down, I'm flaring. We are floating, floating, floating. 
floating, floating, floating. Down with the nose, up with the collective. And we're on the ground. So now, can you do an auto rotation successfully from, uh, oh, I don't know, whatever that was, 70 feet or whatever? Yes, you can. All right. So what was the big difference there? Well, I had my speed up. I mean, I was going, I didn't even look at the speedometer or the airspeed indicator, but I was going about 70 or higher. I don't know, maybe a little faster. But the whole point is, if you lose the engine, if you keep your, tend to keep your speed up on takeoff, and you lose the engine, you got options, all right? If I would have been climbing out at 45 and tried to enter an auto going 45 knots, that would have been really ugly on the on the set down. So, again, uh, you know, if you got a big old runway out in front of you and you're departing from a runway, try to keep your speed up. You know, here we go, we're climbing out, there's 65. Now I got 70 on the climb out. Now, right now, I could enter an auto and I guarantee you we could get it on the ground. It's gonna be ugly because it's gonna be in the mud. But we could get the thing on the ground safely. That extra airspeed gives you more kinetic energy and more options. Okay, so speed is airspeed is your friend when it comes to auto rotations. So. And one tank of Bravo is coming up midfield on the downwind 2 8. One tank of Bravo, uh, you want to tax your way out there to it? I'm sorry, forgot what I was doing. Yeah, let's do a taxiway, taxiway alpha. One thing on Bravo, taxiway alpha, clear for the option. Here's the option for uh, alpha taxiway. So, you know, if you're doing a photo flight or something like that, where you're going to be, you know, I don't know, two, three hundred feet in the air. And you're doing a photo flight, you want to tend to keep your speed up to the fastest you can possibly go on the flight without compromising your photos, I guess you could say. Because to get back to a decent auto rotation speed, to get your, be able to get your speed back up to a good, you know, 60 to 70, it's a lot easier if you're starting at 35 or 40 than it is if you're starting at you know, you're doing something stupid like an out-of-ground effect hover and you're just barely tooting along and you lose the engine, it's not going to be pretty if you're only a few hundred feet in the air. So, all right, so here we are. We're back on there. Coming down. Rolling the throttle down. Up a little bit with the collective. The most important thing on an auto rotation is airspeed. Keep your airspeed up. I'm a little fast, but that's okay. Even that extra little speed doesn't hurt a thing. I'm just going to float farther. I get down here, I'm going to flare. Watch how far this thing floats. Float, 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 float. Now we're starting to settle down with the skid to level, and we're on the ground. So you know, if I'm at uh, coming down, I'll come a little bit right with the stick there, just to keep me right over the yellow line here. If I enter the auto, and you know my airspeed, you know, if I enter an auto and I carry. I ride the glide down at 80 knots instead of 65 or 70. Doesn't hurt a damn thing. All it's going to do is float a whole lot more at the bottom. Now, your max auto rotation speed is about 100. We'll talk about all the reasons why here in just a bit. But, you know, if you come in, I tend to keep my speed up more in an auto rotation. And if this damn thing quit, I'm going to tend to keep my speed up in that auto rotation because I know it's so much easier to, to flare and uh, smooth it right in, slide it on if you got extra airspeed. If you're going slow, a lot of your, uh, uh, a lot of your ability to touch this thing down pretty smoothly and slide it on is gone. So you're going to hit hard. You know, if you're only going 30 and you have to enter an auto rotation and you're 100 feet at 30, man, it's just you're making it. Uh, it's going to be hard to <laughs> come out of that one without it just about destroying the aircraft. You probably walk away from it as long as you don't get a blade stall. If you get the collective down, but uh, you're going to destroy the aircraft. So. One Tango Bravo, midfield, downwind, run, or Alpha Taxiway. One Tango Bravo, Taxiway, Alpha, clear for the option. There's the option, Alpha Taxiway. Hey, Tim, I'd like to do a 360 auto from about, oh, I'll go about 1,500 feet, and then I'll enter right over the end of Alpha Taxiway, and we'll do a 360 auto rotation back down to Alpha, if that's okay. That's approved. You're all I got. You can do whatever you need. All right, do that. 
So we're going to sneak on up here to whole 1500 or so. And so the reason I'm showing you this is what happens if the engine quits and the only spot you got to go to is right under you. So let's see what we do there. So we'll sneak on up here. Get on up here quite a ways. There's about 1500. Let's we'll sneak on here where Alpha Taxiway is right under us here. Uh, we're right over the top of the way, so we're going to lower the collective, roll the throttle up a little bit on the ski, or <laughs> up on, a little on the collective. Now I'm going to purposefully let this thing get a little bit slow. So we're coming around. Why am I letting it get slow? Because the radius of my turn is so much tighter if I slow the aircraft down. So we're down to 50. I'm bringing it around. Here's Alpha Taxiway down there below me coming around. I'm going to go to get my speed back. Let my nose come down. Got my 70-ish back, looking good. That's just kind of a straight-in auto here. Here we go, there's Alpha Taxiway. We're floating, 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 floating. Down with the skids, up with the collective. We're on the ground. All right. Roll her back up. Yeah, one Tango Bravo is on the go. I'd like to uh, head back out to the east and then direct uh, Cape Copter's pad uh, from the east. Tango Bravo, proceed as requested. Use caution landing and on movement area. The wind is 310 at 15, gusting 20. One Tango Bravo, Roger. Get it right here. If I lost the engine, I'm going to try to get it first and foremost. Get that collective down. Then I'm going to try to turn towards into the wind as much as I can. And with all these muddy fields, if I couldn't make it back to the runway, I'd have to do the auto rotation where I flare a lot more at the end to get that forward speed down as much as you can. And then uh, level your skids, heading for the mud and hoping for the best. We got a uh, eh, pretty small little area we go into here on our ramp. We got hangers on one side, hangers on the other side. But uh, make for a nice uh, steep approach in here. Now, yeah, well, Tango Bravo is uh, for uh, short final landing assured the uh, Cape Copter's ramp. Roger. Now, one little set of wires we go over. We definitely got those clear. Now, I'm going to start easing back on my speed a little. with the governor. Friction, friction, looking at my timer. Second hands on the 12, we're gonna do a two minute cool down. On the two minute cool down, we'll sit here for a minute and a half, and then we'll disengage the clutch switch. 30 seconds later, pull mixture mags off there. So again, Airspeed is your friend in an auto rotation. So you got to keep your airspeed decent, you know. It's, uh, and again, I learned everything I learned from doing auto rotations by flying gyroplanes. When you fly a gyroplane, when you come in for a landing, you know, the usual uh, approach speed is about 65. And, if, you know, the gyroplane, you can come in full power off 65. The aircraft will float quite a, quite a ways, and you can ease the thing onto the runway and make a 
landing that looks pretty darn decent. So if you, as you get slower in the gyroplane, what happens is you don't have as much float at the end. So you come down the gyroplane at 65 and you flare and it'll float, 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 ease it on the runway and touch it down. At 60, you're going to come in and flare and it's going to float, 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 ease it onto the runway. You go to 55, the aircraft, you will flare the aircraft, it's going to float, float, sit down on the runway. At 50, you're going to come in and flare and it's going to float, float, it's going to barely float, <laughs> not much at all, down on the runway. All right. So as you get slower, what happens is that float, now let's say that we were to come in at 40 knots. So I disengage my clutch switch. If we were to come in at 40 knots in the gyroplane, you come in, 40 knots, you raise the nose, the nose is going to come up, but it's not going to flirt worth it, float worth a diddly damn. It's going to end up hitting the, you're going to hit hard on the runway and make a real embarrassing looking runway. And if you, or, I'm sorry, real embarrassing looking touchdown. And if you get slower than 40, it gets even worse. So airspeed is your friend. You got to keep that uh, airspeed up during the auto rotation because that's what you're using convert to stopping power, both your descent and your forward airspeed. If you get slow, it's going to be really ugly. If you were to do that with a helicopter, let's say we set our airspeed and try to get down to 40, you know, if we came in and we were low level and had to enter an auto rotation at 40, and we were at 40 at the flare, again, just like the gyroplane, plane, the nose is going to come up, right? but you're really not going to be able to stop your descent, and the thing is going to hit hard, and one thing you want to remember if you're doing a full down auto, even if you're going slow, you got to get the skids level. You got to land level skids. You can't land on the back of the skids and get this rocking thing going because you'll end up chopping the tail boom off if you do. So, no matter what the airspeed is at the flare, you got to get the skids back down level. So, when you touch down on the ground, you've got level skids or it's going to be really ugly. I'm going to break a little here. You always stop the blades with them lined up with the long axis of the aircraft. If the wind's blowing a little bit, I'll get out and turn it just about 10 or 15 degrees and lock the, uh, uh, lock the rotor brake.